Hi, my name is Liz Pratt. I am a sensory specialist who is also working on a brewery and planning. I'm based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. What I like to talk about is that there's this idea that if you Google your symptoms when you're not feeling well, you're gonna end up thinking you're gonna die. Sensory can be a little bit the same way. There's a lot of wonderful technical information out there about how to run a really robust panel that is perfectly calibrated to run smoothly. And a lot of that takes one or more full-time staff members. We don't really have a choice anymore with turning away from this and just saying, hey, it's too hard. So for me, the key is trying to figure out how you can run a sensory program that is useful and has impact if you have maybe only one person eight hours a week or something like that, because it really is not an option anymore. <laughs> and uh, in terms of Europe, where do you see it? Do you see a lot of European small breweries using sensory perception or is it still in its infancy here? Well, I can definitely share that when I moved to Amsterdam from Portland, Maine, I spent quite a bit of time looking for a full-time sensory role and I didn't see a lot out there. But what I did see was a lot of small breweries sending me emails, asking me questions, wanting me to visit and give advice. So I ended up opening my own company and just doing freelance. I'd go, you know, maybe I go to Harlem two days a week. Maybe I go down to Utrecht on Wednesdays. And that way I was able to help a lot of these smaller breweries that are interested, but are maybe too intimidated or too crunched on time or crunched on you know how many people they can get to panel and so it was really wonderful to be able to go help with that and I'm, re I'm really looking forward to seeing it continue to grow. How can somebody just give uh, the top three tips a small brewer can do if they don't have anything if they've just been brewing by their gut which is you know how some of this that uh, craft brewers sometimes starts you know from a garage mm -hmm. And they started their first brewery then the first year and they realized their batches are you know not consistent mm -hmm. maybe that's not a problem they just na rename it but <laughs> well i can definitely give you my number one my number one is paying attention to your raw materials a lot of us are in the industry because we like sitting around with our friends enjoying a beer and enjoying our time together we like the final product However, if you're paying attention to your raw materials as you're using them every day, you can save so much money and time and frustration. I have seen snail shells in malt. I have seen contaminated water from a water main break that the brewery was not informed about. Uh, someone told me they found a knife in a bag of hot pellets once. You know, these things are showing up all over the place and the more time that you spend thinking about the product, slowing down a little bit, looking at the ingredients that are coming into your brewery, you can start saving money, saving time, and then as you get better and better, you'll get to where you're going, hey, so I took a, took a glass of water from the tank and the color doesn't look quite right. It's just a little bit off, or it smells just a little bit off. The other big thing I would tell new brewers is that there's really only one way to get better at tasting. Our physical bodies change quite a bit, but there's not a lot we can do to change what our bodies are capable of sensing. What you can change is how well you read the messages your body gives you. So the only way to get better is by continuing to do it and pay attention. And that's what we all want to do anyway, right? Great. Thanks, Liz, for talking to the beer idiots. You got it. <laughs>